There was a tall mountain on a western plain where grass grew. Grass grew all over the mountain and all over the plain. Sometimes buffalo grazed up one side of the mountain and down the other side and over the plain. Sometimes long-horned cattle. But most of the time the sun shone and the grass grew. And no one thought very much of this mountain when they saw it. But one night... Night of the long moon, the Indians who had been asleep in that mountain for hundreds of years woke up. They woke up and they came out of the mountain rubbing their eyes to look at the country they had left hundreds of years before. The sun rose, and the world looked very much as they had left it. The grass was green, and the wind blew for as far as they could see in any direction. But these were wandering Indians, so they wandered to the west. Huh? said one of the Indians. The wild geese. Dark crosses in the shape of a V were flying south high across the sky. Huh? said another Indian. What has happened to the wild geese? They are seven moons ahead of themselves, and they fly by no route that river ever ran. My friend, said another Indian, there has been a change in the world. They watched the geese come closer, and as the geese flew overhead, there was a hard purring, such as a wild cat made out of stone would make in its stony throat. The geese have changed, said the Indian. They fly like dead geese on stiff wings and make a sound that no goose has ever made. They fly in new paths through the air that no wild geese have ever followed before. As the Indians came toward the high blue mountain, a great black herd in single file charged past them. It made no dust on the dusty plain. Huh, said the Indian. The world has changed. The buffalo travel like Indians on the warpath. They raise no dust on the dusty plain. By the edge of the mountain, they saw sharp hills with holes in them rising up toward the sky. Huh, said one of the Indians. The Pueblos have gone crazy. They scraped the sky. When the Indians came by the hard paths into that city beside the mountain on the edge of the plain, the white-faced people who lived in the city were not surprised. They looked at the Indians, but they did not speak to them. The Indians walked silently from one edge of the town to the other edge of the town. They saw the new world about them, and they were silent. The air was foul-smelling in the Indians' noses. Big black mites of sharp dust blew on the wind into their eyes. The noises were jagged in their ears and loud. They saw no Indians except a few wooden Indians who were silent too and never blinked an eye as they walked by. The Indians walked through the stony town and out of it into the wooden outskirts along the hard black paths that had a white line down the middle and were covered with hard shining black wigwams all moving on rolling feet like fast logs rolling. In the fast moving wigwam sat the white faced people with their white faced children and moved about always moving. The white-faced people showed no surprise. They were used to everything, and that blankness was in their faces. Their faces were fat. Our world is not here, said the first Indian. 
Our people are not here, said the second Indian. Huh? said the third Indian. Let's go out of this foul-smelling, fast-moving, stony world into the deep green forests by the clear-running streams. So they walked many miles through much dust where the forests had been. They have cut down our forests without leaving the young trees to grow, said the first Indian. Nothing grows here, said the second Indian. Huh? said the third Indian. They have exchanged our wilderness for a desert, and in this desert, we are lost. And silently, on the second night of the long moon, the Indians walked back into the tall mountain on the western plain where the grass grew. And there they will sleep for hundreds of years till the forests grow tall and the grass grows again on the desert.